Dear Excellencies, distinguished guests, esteemed audience, a very good morning and afternoon to everyone. My name is Nadezhda and I will be serving as your MC today. On behalf of the Gas Exporting Countries Forum, I thank you for finding time to join us today. We appreciate your, we appreciate and treasure your kind attention, interest and involvement. Since 2020, we have been meeting with you on the backdrop of a general feeling of disharmony, sense of non-acceptance of new, quite restricted realities, and attempts to get back to a habitual lifestyle, to get back to what we used to call normality. This is not only due to the COVID-19 pandemic, which worsened humanitarian conditions, disrupted economic growth, and strained social ties, but also due to a growing rift in values in the understanding of where we are all going and why, as well as what kind of future we want to face. Each time when we meet, I'm repeatedly saying that since the very establishment, our forum has been striving to serve as a platform for the science, technology, and experience interface for the benefit of the member countries, consumers, partners, industry stakeholders. In other words, the GCF has been working in a very specific field with very particular mandate and objectives. Meanwhile, has been making its own tribute in building on a better, more sustainable, more accessible, more prosperous future for all through advancement of the area entrusted. Today, our conversation is to, do, to be dedicated to two important aspects. That's energy science, innovation and technologies, as well as to the issue of information and international cooperation as tools to achieve the goals in front of the industry. Having said this, it is with enormous pleasure for me to introduce to you our today's guest speaker, absolutely exceptional figure. I would even call him a James Bond of international journalism, best known for his exclusive interviews with global movers and shakers. I'm talking about Dr. Brilov, Sergei Brilov, who is going to address us today in the capacity of the Global Energy Association president. In fact, there is a spectacular performance prepared for you with a number of video materials. It might happen, unfortunately, that when sharing them at the meeting today, we might be facing some minor technical lags. Thus, to compensate this unpleasant situation, a full set of these materials are to be disseminated to all of you afterwards. Dear guests, to ensure smooth and uninterrupted supply of information, and the seamless flow of the event, please ensure that your mics remain muted. You are kindly invited to become a part of this open conversation, pose your questions and share your views via utilizing the public chat. On this note, it is my privilege to invite His Excellency GC of Secretary General, Dr. Yuri Sinturin, to deliver his opening remarks. Your Excellency, Dr. Yuri Sinturin, please, the floor is yours. and gentlemen, a very warm welcome from Doha. A sign of uh, human resilience uh, is uh, that we are connected to each other right now, uh, despite a deadly virus, uh, making every attempt to keep us isolated from one, one another. This is obviously thanks uh, in large part to technological innovation and scientific advancement. And uh, the speed of technologically driven innovation and its impact on our digitally connected lives is now taking place at a faster speed than ever. In this new era, where powerful new technological intermediaries emerge every day, big data, artificial intelligence, smart software in the cloud, robots, and machine learning are becoming new normality. At this rate, humanity will change more in the next 20 years than it has uh, done during the past 300 years. But where uh, is all this technological intelligence going? What will happen to the energy world, to human creativity and uh, serendipity, and uh, to how we do business? To address some of these issues, we are delighted to have invited Dr. Sergei Brelov, the Global Energy Association President, to participate in our 50, uh, 53rd edition of the signature guest lecture series. Dr. Brelov is a well-known Russian TV star, 
manager and presenter of the Saturday News with Sergei Brilov program. Noticeable interviews taken by him include exclusive conversations with the leaders of the United Nations Security Council's permanent member countries, Russian President Vladimir Putin, British Prime Minister Tony Blair, Gordon Brown and David Cameron, Chinese President Xi Jinping, United States Presidents George Bush and Barack Obama, French Presidents Valéry Giscard d'Estaing, Nicolas Sarkozy and Emmanuel Macron. Besides uh, the impressive media portfolio, Dr. Brilov is deeply involved and engaged in social and scientific activities. He leads uh, the Beren Billingshausen Institute in Uruguay. He is a member of the Council on Foreign and Defense Policy Presidium, member of the Russian International Affairs Council, the Valdai Discussion Club and St. George's Club in Grenada. He makes uh, numerous publications on international relations, including with his uh, permanent British co-author, Bernard O'Connor. Mr. Brelov was born in Havana, graduated from Moscow State uh, Institute of International Relations, the Institute of Foreign Languages of Montevideo, courses of BBC and the United States Agency for International Development. In 1990-1993, Dr. Blerov worked as a correspondent in the Department of Science and Education of the leading youth Russian newspaper, Komsomolskaya Pravda by name. Uh, then he worked as a special correspondent of the International Department of the Moscow News newspaper. Uh, recently, Dr. Brelov assumed uh, the office of the Global Energy Association Presidency, a non-governmental institution with a focus on promotion of industry research and energy cooperation. Since 2003, the association has been managing the Global Energy Prize, a reputable Nobel Prize-like international award for outstanding uh, scientific research and technological developments in energy field. During this period of time, 42 laureates from 15 countries have been awarded by the above-mentioned prize. There are three categories to be awarded annually. And uh, in 2021, 34 nominations are devoted to conventional energy, 45 to non-conventional, and 27 to new ways of energy application, including a management subcategory accordingly. Uh, last year, 2020, the association released first ever 10 breakthrough ideas in energy for the next 10 years report, a collection of the most promising technological solutions to be dominating in energy in a decade perspective. In a way, this is a valuable contribution in advancement energy industries at a global scale, made up by the association in collaboration with leading experts and scientists from all over the world. We will hear about these 10 energy ideas to watch, as well as about the association's history, mission, the prize, and nominees in more details from our esteemed speaker in a short period of time. Ladies and gentlemen, at the start of 2021, the Gas Exporting Countries Forum launched a very important campaign, uh, which is called the communication campaign, Did You Know? On social media, we launched it on social media to provide easy to understand facts, figures and data upon natural gas. The campaign is aimed at educating our audience and sharing knowledge about the world of energy today. In times of rising appetite for energy, have an increasing struggle for climate protection and better future for all of us. Today, 4.5 billion internet users and more than 3.6 billion social media users often find it increasingly difficult to distinguish between facts and fiction. The deployment of trolls Bots and fake news have further exacerbated the search for truth. In fact, social media has become a tool in global geopolitics and censorship, more so during the pandemic, limited real-life social interaction and increased the dependency to seek information from the worldwide website. Additionally, a recurrent theme that has been echoed at industry meetings and conferences is uh, that natural gas has some image problems. Opponents have tried to cost hydrocarbons as uh, the villain, yet uh, the fact of matter is uh, that hydrocarbons uh, brought immense prosperity to the world's population. 
as a tireless advocate of uh, more advanced, uh, more eco-friendly, more accessible and reliable energy future, the GCF is confronting narratives, propaganda, half-truth and double standards. As long as our member countries continue to fulfill their obligations towards all contracting parties, notwithstanding numerous challenges, our forum pursues fully transparent and open policy towards its audience. Based on our latest data and scientifically grounded projections, quantified uh, through the use of the unique and highly granular GCF global gas model, we declare, and we are completely determined about that, that fossil fuels will maintain a leading role in the global energy mix, accounting for at least 71% in 2050 of the world's energy need. Meanwhile, natural gas uh, can be considered as uh, the only hydrocarbon resource to increase its share from 23% today to 28% in 2050. We exercise a deep-rooted belief that natural gas embodies the energy future and innovation, which is said to enable us to carry our daily lives in the most efficient and sustainable way. I would like to stress uh, that as a media person working with information at the highest professional level, no one realizes uh, the importance of fact-based discourse better than our today's esteemed guest speaker. In other words, journalism is underpinned by the thought that facts are sacred. On this note, I invite Dr. Blavlov to take the floor. Well, this is enduring, but just I can't find words. I, I, I should rather disappear after what you've just said, you know. Uh, overwhelmed by your compliments. Thank you so much indeed, sir. Thank you so much. Um, right. The global energy price. An interesting subject, actually, if you think about it. Let me start by um, describing things as they, as they stand. Uh, the prize was founded in 2002 in rather political circumstances because they, they announced it. They, I mean, President Putin and his counterparts vis-a-vis -vis from the European Union during the Russia-EU summit in 2002, 19 years ago. But from the start, I should say that the prize is not political, and I'll be stressing that point because that's really truly important. In fact, I think that uh, my general presentation is going to be about the philosophy of the prize, which is not so much about gold medals, but rather about honest, transparent, and prudent dialogue about the future of energy. Uh, now, the next uh, forums, this will be accompanied by some pictures, of course, and you will see the Russia-EU summit of 2002 with people looking rather young, Javier Solana among them. Uh, my good friends. Uh, by the way, I should add something to which you've mentioned. Uh, on a couple of occasions, I actually promoted people. I met a humble British Foreign Secretary Boris Johnson, who was to become Prime Minister, and I met a humble French Minister who be became their President. So sometimes, you know, I have a good, a good hand with, it, with, with, with things like that. Now, it, it is true that 42 scientists from 15 countries have been awarded uh, the prize in this last 19 years, although in this last year, and I will be coming uh, later to this point, we've dramatically increased uh, the figures because the prize, of course, deserves uh, better attention, better GR, and better PR. In fact, let me uh, also say that the prize, as of today, is managed. This is, is managed by the Association Global Energy, which in turn is founded by three Russian companies: the Rossetti, which is the federal grid company here, uh, the uh, Gazprom. I can't. I, I don't. I don't really have to explain what Gazprom stands for in your company and Sir Good Nafti Gas, which also manages oil and gas fields in Western Siberia. There's an important uh, global rating called uh, IREC Observatory uh, on academic rankings and excellence. So uh, Global Energy is the only Russian-based uh, prize uh, which is uh, on that list. Uh, now, the combination of our founders allows us to have the monetary size of the prize uh, which stands at 39 million Russian rubles, which given today's current exchange rate means 520,000 US dollars. And to tell you something in advance, we are, are of course interested in bringing the price back to the level where a million dollars could be awarded or a sum uh, around that. But of that I will uh, speak later. What is very important is that despite the fact that the price was, as I said, um, founded in rather political circumstances, uh, the decision-making is run not by the members of the association, 
The oil Bay Association is very interested to do things on behalf of its members, but the prize per share is awarded by a distinguished international award committee. It includes 20 scientists, leading scientists, Nobel Prize winners among them. The chair of the international committee is Ray Kuei Chung uh, of South Korea, uh, who was in fact awarded Nobel Prize for sustain Sustainable Development Agenda. He was the former assistant to the UN uh, Secretary General. Uh, 15 members of the international committee are from outside of Russia, five are Russians. Uh, the uh, nomination process is completely transparent and independent. Uh, people with uh, high academic rankings can nominate people, self-nominations are prohibited. Uh, so people who get the prize are in fact, uh, well, do in fact represent the cream of the uh, global science. And let them boast to be there were at least a couple of occasions in the history of the prize where people first got their global energy prize and got their Nobel prizes uh, after that. So we really elect, uh, not we, the International Awards Committee really awards the prize to distinguished scientists uh, with very good rankings. I'll give you an example of last year uh, when we had uh, three laureates for our three uh, sub-nominations, which, uh, let me repeat that, is conventional energy, non-conventional energy, and new applications, including management. And they were Carlo Rubia, whom I think many of you know. He's a distinguished Italian scientist. By the way, these days, he's also the lifelong senator of the Italian Republic, but he's not a politician, of course. He was uh, awarded for uh, the promotion of sustainability of energy use, especially gas and uh, nuclear energy. Uh, we had a Pei Dong Yang, who is Chinese born, but he is currently from the United States. Uh, he specializes in nano things and photovoltaics in particular. And our third winner was Nicolas Haritsigru from Greece for uh, microgrid uh, technologies. This is also very important. I was giving you the names now, but I should, be, I should come back here and now to the notion of three nominations, which allows us not to follow fashion. Because if you follow fashion these days, you must award uh, the green prizes all over the place. No, we are promoting different ways at looking at different, uh, different angles uh, of the energy agenda. We are not against solar or wind, we're not. In fact, there are parts of the world where solar and wind energy works perfectly well. And that even includes Russia. There are places in Russia, which is of course a northern country, which are remote. It's not worth building a super grid over, uh, towards there. It's not worth, uh, uh, building a gas or oil pipeline. You do uh, put uh, solar wind fields in places like Altai mountains or remote uh, places of Bashkiria and they work perfectly well. Uh, but then of course when you compare things and this we are not hiding, you come to interesting conclusions. My favorite subjects personally these days and it is in our, our annual report uh, but I think I should mention it here now my favorite subject is the hydrogen. Uh, it's so fashionable, fashionable, which is a bad word to be talking these days about the green hydrogen. Yeah, okay, you use the solar and wind, you take energy from the air, you then use uh, hydrolysis, electrolysis, excuse me, to produce uh, hydrogen out of water. And it sounds so nice, but ladies and gentlemen, a ton of such a hydrogen, green hydrogen, costs 3.5 to six times more in comparison with blue hydrogen uh, from natural gas. So if you are talking seriously about accessibility of energy, if you are really serious about the sustainable uh, uh, energy, uh, sustainable uh, development uh, agenda as formulated by the United Nations, you should be speaking in terms of affordable and accessible energy, which is about smart approach to fossils. Uh, another chapter in our annual report uh, was last year dedicated uh, to CO2 capture. Uh, and we'll be coming back to that subject in our next annual report. So we position the prize, and especially the association which manages the prize, as an organization which cherishes the independent stature of its international award committee, but also is a platform for normal prudent and honest dialogue about where we're going, as Mr. Centurion 
has said before. Let me now boast a bit about a couple of things which we achieved in this last year, and here we will need some, some of the slides, Nadezhda, which <coughs> with which uh, we've uh, provided you with. Now, the management of the association uh, changed last year. I was invited to assist the, uh, the association with better PR uh, and international GR um, approach. Uh, first of all, let me talk about the uh, most important thing, and that is the nomination statistics. As you can see, I inherited the organization in 2000, 2019, uh, which had 48, just 48, unfortunately, original uh, nominations. So 2019, when I came to the organization, 48 nominations from 12 countries. We've just concluded our last uh, nomination cycle, so we have now uh, 106 nominations compared with 48, uh, and 36 countries participating in the process instead of 12. My particular interest, and that's of course explains is partly explained by my own biography, I actively promote the prize in the developing world, and we have so many more nominations this year, not from the usual suspects like the United States, European Union, Russia, and China, but also from Arab countries, the Middle East countries, African countries, and Latin American countries. I, I'm, I'm really proud of that achievement in the last year. Uh, now, the nominations, that's the next slide. As you can see, we try, as you will see now, we try to be balanced. But there was a period of time uh, when uh, two years ago, when I inherited the organization, when uh, non-conventional energy, alternative energy, started dominating out of passion. In fact, if you spread the net properly all over the world, all over different segments of industry and uh, academia, and especially different regions, uh, things can be balanced. Yes, it is true that we had 45 nominations for uh, alternative energy, and nomination is there, the subnomination. But we also had a a visible increase on uh, conventional energy. Compare 16 uh, nominations just two years ago and 34 now. I'm particularly proud that we have many nominations like that from the developing countries, where we have we are now in deep dialogue with uh, Latin American and African countries. I have inter internationalized our uh, trustees committee in this last year. And when you start analyzing nominations coming from, say, Nigeria, well, and, and generally, uh, African countries, their message is that, yes, we would like to have solar and wind, this is all very nice, but we have to feed our people. We're at the stage when we must launch our development. Uh, and for that, we need a normal nuclear plant or normal supply of oil and gas. That's, that's their message, that's what they work on, and that's what we also cherish. Uh, our media coverage has uh, uh, improved uh, the Russian media growth uh, in coverage terms is by 42%. So we went from 80 million to 113 uh, million uh, times that we were mentioned. I'm very proud, uh, as far as the foreign media is concerned, uh, there the growth is by 238%. That's the next slide in this last year. Um, uh, in particular, I'm very glad that our annual report, the, first, the, the very first publication of the annual report, got around 800 uh, quotes in the international media, and we're talking about serious international media. But I think I should mention it now. Now, the social media is uh, the next uh, slide. Uh, here we have a growth, among other things, by 624%. That's the next slide. Uh, that's the video views. Yes, there were just 290,000 views last year, and now there are more than uh, 2 million. Um, we are very proud that uh, we've been able to launch, despite the pandemic, uh, a series of chats and interviews with leading scientists discussing the kind of agenda which was mentioned by Mr. Sinturin. Uh, and these videos are readily watched by different sorts of audiences, professional and non-professional, uh, all over the world. And yes, it is true that uh, a major chunk of that growth is because of our active promotion in the uh, developing world, uh, Latin America, India, uh, Africa, Asia. Uh, but we're not forgetting about Europe and the United States. Of course not. Of course not. We're not, you know, we're not naive. Uh, in fact, we're serious people. So if you are serious, you want to, you want to uh, 
promote yourself in the uh, leading uh, media. Uh, we've achieved uh, in just one year a hundred and uh, hold a sec. Uh, I, I remember this speaker by heart. Uh, one hundred and twenty-eight thousand uh, Facebook subscribers. Uh, there was nothing revolutionary in our tactics. We just uh, applied common sense. Uh, I know that many of the our partner companies and and, and sometimes even countries uh, do not uh, have this source of growth in social media. We know how to do it. So in fact, my beloved press secretary is now off the screen, but she's looking at me with admiration, and I love that smile on her face at the moment. You're not seeing her, but uh, she's looking at me and smiling. Um, our website popularity, that's the next uh, slide. We completely redesigned the uh, website in this last year, uh, launching a new version of it. And as you can see, uh, oh, there's the two YouTube channel popularity, that's the next slide. But also, as you can see, the growth is uh, substantial and visible, and it's by uh, actually hundreds of uh, percent. Uh, coming back to the website, even though the slide is not on the screen, uh, there was a moment when we achieved a thousand, a thousand forty-nine percent uh, growth. Uh, but we're good. We are good. We uh, have uh, many visits to the website, and besides, uh, we've also launched a weekly uh, newsletter. Well, nothing revolutionary, nothing new. But we have now a quality circle of subscribers with very good. Uh, because as far as opening uh, the uh, newsletter is concerned, and quite often in that newsletter, we cover not just the uh, routine uh, activities uh, of the association, but we also uh, describe new tendencies, new technologies uh, in what's being done. By the way, when I said new technologies and new applications, I should come back to the notion of us having three nominations, the conventional, energy, non-conventional, and uh, new applications, which includes management, as I said. And there, one of the most important things, and we can see it in the statistics of this last year, where the new management already presided over the process, uh, is that um, we fully understand that the major academic centers of research are still in mostly in Western Europe, the United States, and increasingly in, in China and in Russia, of course. Uh, and that you can't really expect people from the developing world offering ideas uh, which would be, which could compete with the sorts of academic ideas which come typically from North uh, America and Europe. But there, we, what we mean, and that's, and that's very much in the description of, the, of that nomination, you don't necessarily have to invent something. You can apply that uh, in, in, in your countries and, and get a nomination, uh, or at least participate in the process and we promote and popularize uh, such ideas, which I think is quite relevant for countries uh, which uh, use natural gas. It's very difficult for them quite often to invent something. But then you use it, you improve the lives of communities in such a way that this could also be part of the prize, which is mostly scientific, but which also has got this sort of social meaning, if I may say so. Uh, as far as the pandemic is concerned, uh, we were hit as everyone. Well, I have to confess to you that I was formally appointed president of the Global Energy Association, if memory serves me well, something like 10th of February last year, and in just uh, four weeks' time, we had quarantine and uh, all, all sorts of restrictions. Uh, so all of the association worked online for many months, uh, yet you've seen the figures. We actually tripled the number of nominations, tripled the number of participating countries. Uh, so in a way, I'm grateful to this new reality because we've uh, experienced, we've checked during the last 12 months, some of the new approaches which allow us to, uh, to do well. And also, on a parallel course, we have launched a series of online chats. Here you have Carlo Rubia, our winner uh, last year. Uh, we also now back uh, in the office. Uh, this is our, our other uh, winner last year, Beidong Young from, from China and the United States, the University. Uh, 
And uh, yes, we've been filming those chats, typically using some of the video techniques, putting them online. And on a couple of occasions, uh, not on a couple of occasions, we now have a steady viewership. Uh, a typical chat like that uh, gathers 20, 30,000 views worldwide. Uh, and then they are uh, well watched. And now that we're open office, we started uh, not just recording Zoom uh, interviews, here you are. There's also in our office uh, chats with some of the prominent uh, scientists. So recently we had Professor Konoplyanik, I'm sure you know that name, and uh, academician Alexeyenka. But as you can see from the faces, we are diverse. We have interviews with people from all over the world. Uh, one of the last faces that you saw there was my good friend Gerardo Blair from Latin America, with whom we uh, managed to create a huge uh, followership for him and ICN Media in Montevideo in Latin America, which I am uh, very proud. Uh, a new twist, which we've also applied from the practical side of things, is that uh, in the past, the International Award Committee typically gathered in a glamorous hotel conference room somewhere in Moscow and St. Petersburg, immensely boring. Uh, now, since last year, we decided that the uh, gathering of the International Award Committee and the announcement of new candidates will be carried out in interesting places uh, around Russia. I don't actually exclude somewhere abroad also, but last year we had Kaluga, which is the place where the Russian cosmon cosmonautics uh, theory was born. Uh, this year we're having Kazan in Tatarstan and the uh, meeting of the International Committee coincides with the oil and gas uh, conference in Kazan, which is of course a major oil and gas producer in Russia. Uh, next year we will be in Khantimansisk, the center of the oil production province, the main uh, oil and gas, uh, well, mostly oil in their case, uh, province uh, of Russia. And uh, presumably uh, next year, now in two years' time, we'll, we'll have Kemerova in, in Siberia, which is the coal-producing uh, region. Uh, I should add to that that in this last year, we've also, instead of uh, rather boring and useless uh, conferences, have uh, participated and co-moderated uh, several important um, meetings. It was under the moderation of the Global Energy Association in Moscow that Her Majesty's Government of the United Kingdom and the Italian government uh, launched the countdown to the uh, conference in uh, in Glasgow, which is to take place later this year. Uh, we also co-organized the oil and gas uh, forum in Tumen, which is Russia's capital for oil and gas uh, production. Uh, and, well, we remember meeting each other at uh, Sabeta in October uh, 2018. I wasn't president of the Global Energy Association back then, but uh, we, uh, I think, I hope, will have uh, similar meetings uh, with you uh, in the future, if, if, if we like each other, or rather if you like us. Uh, very lastly, uh, but in very importantly, that report, the idea of the publication of an annual, annual report by the Global Energy Association, a report called 10 Breakthrough Ideas for the Next 10 Years in Energy, uh, was something which was um, pushed by our members, uh, Rossetti, Gazprom and Surgut uh, Gas. Yet it uh, has proved to be a very interesting twist. The more so that, yes, we do coordinate uh, the contents of the report with our members, but the uh, articles, the chapters, are written by scientists, <laughs> scientists from uh, uh, different corners of the world. Here you see, by the way, uh, that very article which I mentioned before, the CO2 capture, uh, written by Nobel Prize winner Rodham Allen from the UK, member of our International Awards Committee. Uh, and uh, what I cherish in the first edition of the report, which was published last year, the second edition, by the way, will be presented during the St. Petersburg Economic Forum in June, during our session, and it becomes an annual thing, uh, is that uh, 
the report is written in such a way that scientists recognize fellow scientists when reading the report. But also, I would say, I dare say, it's quite useful for managers, uh, for commercial sector, because you see the new ideas. And they may be about alternative energy as well. But you have serious talk about fossil, fossil fuels and how they can not just survive, but further contribute to better life. Uh, these are the new formulas for oil exploration, uh, new formulas for cleanly, clean burning of coal. Uh, you know, the easiest thing to say is to put a big cross over, oil, over coal uh, or even natural gas. The smart way is to engage, I was going to say mobilize, no, I'm not going to say that, to engage the academic uh, community. Uh, to have a proper dialogue and uh, we'll see if we can do it because of course the first annual report was experimental the second one is going to be published shortly uh, but what we intend to do is that um, maybe in our third report presumably is that chapters written by pure academicians scientists will be accompanied by postscriptums, PS, uh, by uh, representatives of research facilities in the industry. So that you have proper dialogue between uh, the visionary scientists, the practitioners, and maybe the government. Okay, the, our goal is not to influence government policy. It is not. Uh, essentially speaking, we are a humble technical organization which helps the International Board Committee to award the prize. But uh, our experience of this last 14 months, 14, 15 since uh, your humble servant uh, arrived here, uh, has been that uh, we see the potential of the association and it's serving as a platform or, if you so wish, an umbrella for dialogue. We have enough good experts from different countries and uh, ever bigger a circle of people who participate in the nomination process to have such a proper dialogue. Once again, coming back to the essential figures, 12 countries participating in the nomination process before the new management came to the association. Uh, they were 12, but they're now 30, 36. 39 nominations, original ones, just year and a half ago, and 94. So we've tripled the figures and we've uh, certainly broadened uh, the horizon. Uh, my dream, as far as your forum is concerned, um, is twofold. Uh, firstly, I would be immensely glad to have um, to organize joint seminars on natural gas, uh, at combined events, uh, wherever, wherever, uh, but combining the um, scientific academic potential of the association and your view of how the industry uh, is developing. Uh, my second goal, I'm not going to hide it, let me be cynical a bit, uh, practical. Uh, my uh, second goal is, of course, to internationalize not just the trustees committee, which we have done this year. I haven't mentioned it, by the way, properly. Uh, we had mostly Russians on the trustees committee. We now have the very respected, uh, maybe the most recognizable Latin American former president, Julio Maria Sanguinetti of Uruguay. We have Peter Wilding, whom you know. Peter Wilding is the co-founder of the Influence Group based between Brussels and London. Uh, PC is, by the way, the inventor of the word Brexit. Uh, and we have uh, Mr. Teller, who is the president of the African Union of Energy Utilities. Uh, thanks to him, by the way, we've broadened substantially the circle of African participants this year. But I also want to internationalize the circle of our members, uh, who, as I said earlier today, uh, are as of today, Gazprom, Surgutnyaftigaz, and Rossetje. Uh, I want to add 
these two uh, non-Russian entities here. Uh, and as I said, uh, the price the price is already not Russian because of the International Awards, Awards Committee. Uh, but I would uh, like to make it even more international in that uh, sense. And I have blessing from the existing members to uh, conduct negotiations like that. But without further ado, uh, I'd rather shut up uh, and I'm most, most happy to answer any of your questions if you have any. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Brilov. Uh, it is. It was indeed very multifaceted, informative, precise, and uh, most importantly, very passionate intervention. And uh, I'm sure that all of our guests are thankful to you and your able team for such an interactive event. We've never, I'll be frank with you, we've never experienced such a show before. Then I will say that uh, Dr. Brilov, the mission in front of you is very important and full of responsibility. And this is the standpoint well, where I will start my first question in the, in the framework of Q&A session. So the first question is about uh, possibility for other, for other members, for other countries, for other companies to join the association. What is basically, can you, can you repeat it once again? What is the benefit for a company, for another partner to join? How to do it? What is required? Do you have some, uh, some specific uh, features uh, for the new incoming partner? Please, the floor is well, yours. First of all, we have uh, proper bank accounts. So it's very easy to transfer money to us, you know, that's the... <laughs> um, now, uh, before the Russian ruble devaluation, the uh, price stood at around a million dollars, roughly, but was, was about 900,000. As I said, as of today, it's uh, 520,000. Uh, these we can achieve, as of today, by uh, working together with our members, if we manage to broaden the uh, cycle of, uh, of our members. We can simultaneously lower the financial tag for members, dispersing this collective sum of money uh, so that we uh, raise the, uh, the price funds and maintain the uh, work of the uh, organization. That's one point. Uh, that having said that, uh, let me also stress the point that since I arrived, despite the rise in the statistics which I've mentioned, we've managed to save a lot of money. And that's not just because of the uh, pandemic. We just applied common sense on a couple of things. It was, for instance, an unexplicable PR contract with Euronews here, which I, to be honest with you, scrapped on the second day of my for my work here. Uh, nothing has changed. In fact, no, our, the, the announcements of the, of the new laureates was broadcast by the United Nations television, BRICS television, South African television, South, South American television, and Russia 24 network here. So we say it's 14 million rubles, but we actually expanded the, the, the coverage. Uh, I fully understand that uh, four uh, people uh, are ready to pay us they must see us in action. And that's uh, the reason why uh, we are now working uh, on the course, which uh, allows us to have members and partners. And partners, of course, do not have to pay that much of money, although I would prefer them to. Uh, but with partners, uh, we have a proper tango for two, and we organize events. Uh, which can be tailored, uh, and we already had good experiences. By the way, what I haven't mentioned, but is it's very important. Uh, next year in Russia, for the first time in decades, you will have the uh, uh, the Congress uh, of the World Energy Congress, uh, World Energy Council, excuse me, the Congress of the World Energy Council, which is of course the oldest existing uh, NGO, international NGO which was, by the way, co-founded by the United States, United Kingdom, and uh, the Soviet Union in 1924, 17 years before the United Nations uh, 
the anti-Fidel United Nations uh, was formed as a uh, coalition. So we've already had several important conferences which were broadcast on Bloomberg television and of course Russian networks uh, and which, which were readily captured by the wider audience and specialized audience and where you had and we were where, where we touched upon subjects which are not necessarily fashionable in today's world but which can be discussed by properly engaging uh, people and the same applies to your agenda, your agenda, uh, and uh, from the very practical point of view, I could say, I, I dare say, that uh, proper dialogue about uh, blue hydrogen, uh, normal dialogue about blue hydrogen and its advantages and its uh, acceptability can be very well done via through a uh, Global Energy Association. Yes, uh, thank you indeed for this uh, so such a broad reply. And in terms of emotions towards our industry, I hope that this is something which was covered by His Excellency Secretary General in his opening remarks when he said that natural gas has some image issues, some image problems. But uh, summarizing and based, I would say based on uh, your reply, I have two good news. First good news is that since you've mentioned World Energy Council, so on 1st July, we're going to have uh, a president and CEO of World Energy Council speaking at yet another edition of Gas Lecture. So allow me to take this opportunity to, to invite you to join. Thank you. And the yeah, we, we hope you, you'll be able to do it. And especially taking into account that it's going to ha happen after uh, the St. Petersburg Forum. And the second good news is that despite um, shortage of time, we still have time for yet another question, okay. which I would like to uh, to ask about the report, the 10 breakthrough ideas for the next 10 years, uh, 10 breakthrough energy ideas for the next 10 years, which has already been uh, discussed during uh, today's event, but still, in your opinion, you already highlighted some sympathies and some maybe preferences, beliefs of yours. Uh, maybe just to connect the dots, some final considerations. What, which ideas from this report to be included repeatedly in the 2021 edition? Which ideas are the most promising, uh, having the most promising, exciting future from your perspective? Uh, Angela Wilkinson, by the way, is going to be a panelist uh, during our uh, conference, uh, our, our session at the St. Petersburg Economic Forum. So, you know, you and, you and I, you, you and us are encircling for Angela. Uh, exactly. Our, Seems like yes. yes right, yes. New, right, and new fossil fuels. I hope that's uh, a good news for her as well. Yes, it is. Now, Angela, Angela is an is an excellent speaker, and uh, <laughs> to be honest with you, I've been uh, uh, using some of her metaphors. I absolutely love her jazz and heavy metal and classics uh, description of the scenarios. They're 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 very nice, and I was lucky enough. I think to be to, to listen to her presentation in Cape Town in South Africa last year, just before the pandemic, where I think she was polishing that idea. So we, 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 I, I respect Angela very much. Um, now there are two ideas which we explored in our experimental last year's first report, and which will uh, deepen in this year's report. I've already mentioned them, but let me stress it again. It is certainly the CO2 capture and pumping uh, the extra CO2 into, say, empty uh, oil fields, uh, which is about creating a totally new industry uh, and neutralizing the effects of extra CO2 in the air from the climate change point of view. Uh, this item, I think, has got direct uh, impact for the natural gas industry worldwide. Uh, so it's absolutely relevant for you. Uh, our second subject, which I think will be permanent and will be just adding details every year to that, 
is uh, the subject of uh, blue hydrogen. Well, hydrogen per se, and comparison between the gray hydrogen, the uh, blue hydrogen, and the green one. Uh, so this will be coming back uh, permanently, permanently. Uh, there are some other ideas which are rather irrelevant for you, but let me give you an example. Uh, we are also uh, launching a new additional report for Eurasia, for the Eurasian Union countries, for which Russia is, of course, a skeleton. In the good sense of the word, spin brother, spin. So we're spin doctoring, if you so wish. Uh, and uh, there, there's a huge potential for hydro stations. As I said, it's irrelevant for you, but uh, you know, the huge uh, Central Asian market, yeah, it's uh, it's relevant. Uh, although, uh, let me explain why we. Uh, are launching this additional Eurasian report. Interestingly enough, because this is a relevant uh, topic for our conversation today, interestingly enough, this idea uh, comes from Africa. Believe it or not, Africa. Uh, the problem is that many of the developing countries' young scientists do not have enough publications in proper academic journals and magazines. Uh, which are quoted by Scopus of World of Science networks. It's a big problem in Russia. Uh, it's a big problem in so many other countries. I uh, mentioned this in my conversation with Dr. Tella, the president of the African Energy Utilities Association. And unexpectedly, he, working between Cote d'Ivoire and Ghana, unexpectedly offered me a recipe because they, in Africa, have a similar problem. So they launched a special report of their association and the African Development Bank, uh, where young scientists publish their industrial ideas. It's an annual report, which put them on the horizon. Uh, this report is not, of course, an academic publication, but it puts those uh, young scientists on the horizon. And they're later picked up by uh, leading magazines. So this report for Eurasia, we're actually preparing in cooperation with the Eurasian Development Bank. So I immediately went to the Eurasian Development Bank after this conversation, shocked them by saying, uh, I've come to you with an African idea. Uh, luckily, there was uh, no arrogance. Uh, on the contrary, they listened to me attentively. And uh, by the end of this year, will be launching this report either at the Russian Energy Week, if it materializes, because there's still pandemic-related questions, or at their own Eurasian uh, conference. Uh, and uh, this is, by the way, an extra idea, which may be interesting for you, because in many of the, even in many of your forums countries, a similar problem exists. Many of them represent the developing world, which is not necessarily well connected to the uh, global academia. Uh, so we've uh, launched this idea for young scientists uh, just to help them and maybe to see them as candidates for Global Energy uh, Prize in another 10 years. Uh, but I would have nothing against us, you and us, uh, working together on a similar thing. Uh, let me launch a couple of ideas. I can't promise we're going to be carrying them out as I'm formulating them now. But for instance, uh, given the success of the very first uh, annual report, which is readily avail available online, by the way, on our website, uh, we've been thinking about uh, a formula which would be the report is still going to be titled 10 breakthrough ideas but it would always have an 11th chapter uh, this we haven't formulated for ourselves yet properly but i can imagine envisage such an 11th 11th hour 11th chapter being written by a youngster uh, well, he hasn't got to be a schoolboy. 
a young researcher. Uh, and uh, why not? I'm fantasizing now. I'm fantasizing now. But why not position such an 11th chapter as a joint project between GECF and Global Energy? And maybe even locating uh, a group of young scientists, natural gas related, as three co authors. As I said, I'm fantasizing, there may be four. But just imagine such a nice thing. Let's take a topic there. It could be very technical, it could be broad. It could be broad. A co author from Qatar, Trinidad and Tobago, uh, Russia, and say Bolivia. They could do something like that. And it's, it's nice, it's socially responsible, it's about the youth. Well, Nadezhda doesn't understand us because she's so young and, uh, you know, but we, the, the old timers, can share such ideas, you know. So we would help Nadezhda's generation to actually, you know, not just to respect us, but also to, you know, to, to appreciate us, appreciate us. Uh, but that, that, that we could do. So let, let's think about it. I, I wanted uh, this meeting of today to be of sort of mutual uh, acknowledgement and acquaintance, but we could, we could fantasize. Well, thank you very much for, for this um, feedback, for this uh, reply. And um, I don't know about our audience, but I personally have a feeling that we just had a brainstorm uh, in terms of how we're gonna how we're gonna move forward together. And I appreciate you. I appreciate our esteemed speaker. I, I appreciate our esteemed audience, and I appreciate our schedule. And that's why I would like to invite uh, His Excellency Secretary General to take the floor again to deliver his closing remarks. Your Excellency, please, the floor is yours. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Brilio, for very uh, thought-provoking ideas uh, expressed uh, by you and brilliant performances uh, uh, of you today. Uh, the required pro progress on net zero on a scale in line with the Paris Agreement provisions implies almost massive changes in the economy, international trade, infrastructure, and perhaps society and geopolitics. In this light, uh, most businesses uh, shall be substantially adjusted, but uh, those in the energy, electricity, mining, agriculture, heavy industry, automotive, uh, shipping, and aviation sectors face uh, probably the greatest uh, changes. Uh, there's a common sense uh, that carbon neutral future requires broad researching and investing activities. Scientifically grounded data and insights are championed at the GECF as well. And this is something we share completely with the Global Energy Association. Our forum was established by our member countries to bring a better understanding about technology that underpins uh, the full spectrum of energy areas. Uh, to promote natural gas as uh, the fuel of choice, force the advancement of energy systems at a global scale, pave the ways for wider usage of environmentally friendly solutions such as natural gas uh, based uh, hydrogen uh, coupled with, with uh, carbon capture, utilization and storage technologies. Natural gas partnering with renewable energy sources, energy recycling, coal to gas switching, as well as introduce brand new digital concepts and solutions. It's not a coincidence uh, that the scientifically grounded by publication by the Global Energy Association offers innovative and advanced technologies to address resembling issues of digitalization of production facilities, necessity to mitigate uh, the harmful emissions and struggle against climate change. Based on these arguments, we are looking forward to seeing the 2021 edition of 10 breakthrough ideas 
in energy for the next 10 years report. I joined the rising consensus that natural gas is one of the global enablers for reducing emissions quickly, cost-effectively, and steadfastly by replacing carbon-intensive fuels as well as backing up intermittent renewables. Thus, in addition to accent on biofuels and such thrilling technologies as artificial photosynthesis, we will observe more attention to natural gas and decarbonization technologies that can maximize uh, the uh, contribution of the blue fuel in front of climate challenges. With a focus on inherent environmentally friendly features of natural gas, the Gas Exploiting Countries Forum is cultivating the so-called culture of energy responsible behavior via a variety of science-oriented initiatives. As a sample, uh, the GECF Gas Research Institute, located in Algeria, is fully dedicated research engine of the forum, is a growing sample of struggle for the best technologies. In this context, we are attaching sincere hopes to find in the Global Energy Association our long-standing partner to search for innovations uh, that will continue to drive us forward. Progress exponentially have, has proven to be key for more sustainable, more prosperous future and our nations without any doubt deserve it. I thank all of you uh, who uh, found an opportunity to join us today and to attend uh, this remarkable event. Be safe and healthy. Until next time, God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Brilov. In the status of long, uh, long-standing ally, would you like to say uh, some final remarks for our audience? I would add one something which I haven't mentioned yet, uh, and I would be immensely grateful to you if this materializes. We could be talking in terms of joint projects and hopefully we'll achieve something. But don't forget that uh, by the end of this year, in November, a new nomination cycle for Global Energy uh, Prize 2022 will start. And I would uh, very much appreciate if you could encourage uh, scientists uh, from your countries, uh, including scientists who work for corporate research centers of natural gas companies, to participate. Uh, the, the, the details are available on our website, which is easily detectable. Uh, let me just once again say that self-nominations are not allowed, uh, but you could encourage your scientists to, you know, to nominate their neighbors, etc. Well, you know how the scientific world uh, works. I would very much like to see as many participants of our nomination cycles from the GECF countries as possible. So we're looking forward to seeing you in your dual capacity as representatives of the industry, but also as friends and uh, partners uh, of, uh, of uh, respective companies. And I saw a little applause on Agustin Ruiz uh, page, and uh, I just sincerely hope that uh, my, my, my real first language is Spanish. So I think it will be a happy day when Agustin and I uh, will have a proper conference in Spanish, which, which will be properly translated for you. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you very Agustin, much. Ahí, 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 ahí vamos. Okay. Okay. Have you finished? I mean, a multilingual, multilingual conversation at the very yeah. conclusion. Uh, <laughs> dear colleagues and uh, dear Dr. Brelo, thanks a lot for brilliant performances. And of course, uh, you gave us a lot of uh, home tasks. Uh, and I'm completely impressed uh, by your invitation to participate in the preparation of the uh, breaking through ideas and uh, in new chapter 11th one. Uh, devoted uh, to youth initiatives. It's very promising for all of us, and I hope uh, that our team and uh, the teams behind us, I mean behind the GCF Secretariat, among uh, ex uh, GCF member countries, of course, uh, without no doubt, will join uh, this initiative. Thanks a lot for your initiatives and your uh, breaking through ideas. It was uh, a, real, a real encouragement for us. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.
Um, so on, the, on this note, our event is practically over. Once again, sincere appreciation to our guest speaker, Dr. Sergei Brilov, Global Energy Association President, distinguished representatives of our member countries, observer members, esteemed members of the diplomatic course accredited to Doha, our friends and colleagues, we are very proud and grateful you managed to find time to join us today. Thank you for your interest. And we hope that today's insightful presentation and these debates have only encouraged it further. In the meantime, I would like to invite you to keep an eye on our website, follow our, our social media accounts to learn about updates. Stay tuned, let us know your feedback. Hope to have you with us soon again. Please keep well and stay safe. Until next time.